So you also have to make some decision about chords. Um, a lot of the modern Minouche players, they play the full-on chord, this entire voicing. Um, Django obviously couldn't do that. Um, in case you didn't know, uh, Django screwed up his hand in a fire. His wife was making some fake flowers, and they're really flammable. And he came home late, and she knocked over a candle, and the whole caravan, or caravan, oh yeah, uh, erupted in, in uh, flames. And she was pregnant. He got her out, but uh, he fell and had a blanket and was protecting himself. Anyway, they, they drug him out of there, but his right side was burned, and his left hand was burned bad. And it took, 18 months for him to recover, and he had to relearn. So he only had a, his hand was kind of burnt, and the skin was tightened, kind of dead in this way. So he had, he had to relearn how to solo with two fingers, and these guys can help out on uh, chords and such, but, uh, you know, on the high strings, but um, not in soloing. So it gives him uh, the genre, or at least his playing, some interesting uh, aspects, the chord voicing. Um, generally you find when uh, he's running up a, a scale or down a scale instead of you know going straight up and down because you have the whole three notes of string thing he generally, generally does a transition like this kind of diagonal over the neck and you're fine if you, you I mean if you want to play like Django just use two fingers there is a there's a lot of sense to it it can make the music easier to play um, and more comfortable um, of course, you'll have to have really fast fingers because you're, you know, making up for it. But um, there's a lot of appeal to that. And if you're going through a lot of these, a lot of this music is uh, in musical notation, not tablature. So if you're going through the notes and you're trying to figure out how he's voicing something, or if you're listening to a recording, you hear him playing, you're trying to figure it out. Uh, keep in mind that he's playing with two fingers, and you may have to go move to a position that you normally wouldn't. But it ends up kind of working out. So. So that's another decision you have to make. Um, like I said, the modern jazz player, or gypsy jazz players, play the full voicing, but Django had a much more simplified version and sometimes more complicated version of co uh, chords to make up for what he was doing. So, uh, and the other thing is that this, since uh, rhythm, the, with, even with the rhythm guitars, you're playing so fast, um, you don't want to play the full chord a lot of the time because it's just a passing chord. That extra note on the high end is not going to give you that much more of a robust feeling, um, and you know, you, you, to keep the speed up, not wear yourself out, uh, you're going to simplify the chords. So later, when I go over the chords, uh, I'll show like the full voicings and maybe some simplified voicings, and maybe talk about how Django would have uh, uh, voiced them. Uh, when learning this music. Like these were standards for uh, Django uh, records he was hearing coming from America, seventy eight um, songs that everybody knew. Of course, he came, you know he made his own songs, um, and a lot of times he would take songs such as like a Tiger Rag and then just make it his own, like Django, which became Django's Tiger. Um, so when you're learning these things, pick a song. Uh, you'll have to end up picking a song and then go and find the standard chords. Now they're all over the internet. They're in this uh, like a boxy kind of uh, notation with uh, like little arrows in there to si signifying which beat, which chord falls in on. Um, you can find uh, how to read them online. And they really give you the standards. Um, I'll go over how to read those in a bit. So the other things you're going to need to learn this music um, are uh, all of Django's songs. I mean, you just, you just might as well get them all, right? There's a collection called Integrale, or Integral, whatever. Um, I-N-T-E-G-R-A-L-E, I think. And uh, it has all of the songs, everything they could find. He, stuff from when he was like 13, playing on a banjo guitar with a music group, all the way up till the you know, late 40s when he was playing on a Gibson Electric. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> It's 22 CD sets, so 40 CDs worth, and it's kind of overwhelming, but go ahead and get it. Um, that way you can, if someone mentions a song or you see a video, you can reference it. Not only that, if you're learning, trying to learn the rhythm of a song, it's good to hear other versions to see what Django's doing in others. Because really, the, when the rhythm section is just as improvised as the solo section, and Django does different things over different uh, sections and different versions of the song.
Um, so once you have all of his songs, you need to pick out maybe like ten that you just really like, that you really get into. It's very important to have songs that you really like because you're going to be working these things to death and you don't want to get sick of them. So pick songs that you really feel. And sometimes with this music it's hard because you know the modern music is so much different than what you're hearing. Our, our ears have evolved, devolved, depending on your opinion. But um, you, the minor songs like Minor Swing and uh, Dark Eyes, those tend to appeal more to modern listeners. Um, and you should add those to your list, although learning Dark Eyes right off the bat may be a bit uh, much to chew on. Uh, so once you have those 10 songs that you really like, and you're all ready, um, you also need to get a program called the Amazing Slowdowner, or something the equivalent. It's a program that will slow down a song without changing pitch, uh, which is important because Django can play really freaking fast, and his rhythms aren't necessarily the kind of rhythms that we're used, you're used to if you listen to classic rock or blues. Um, and also, this program lets you change the pitch, which is convenient because a lot of these Django recordings were ripped off of 78s with the speeds kind of iffy. So, so instead of having to retune your guitar like a, a quarter step up and then a quarter step down all the time, uh, it's nice to just be able to slide that pitch until you're in tune with the song. Alright, so uh, you have all the tools you need, all the things you need in order to get, to get started. Um, so I suppose the next step is uh, going over chords. Uh, once you have these chords, you can go to a website called Djangopedia.com and find uh, tons of chord charts for all his songs, or most of his songs, or a good majority of his songs. Um, and be able to play along, and be able to play along to his recordings. And it's important that you get those up to speed, that you really become a master of playing rhythm for this style of music, because uh, Django uh, mostly arpeggiates. Um, I come into the, these videos and, and on YouTube and I find posting saying that, man, this is a really cool kind of music, what kind of scales are you using? Which almost becomes a, a ridic ridiculous question once you start getting into this stuff. Now, he does use scales, major minor, harmonic, uh, harmonic minor, a lot of diminished uh, runs, but the majority of it is arpeggiating over chords, thinking, what chord am I, is the rhythm player on right now? What notes do I need to play in order to accent that note, uh, or those chords, rather? Um, and really continue the melody and the vibe of, of the song. So, I'll teach you these chords. Um, really take them to heart and uh, be good at them.